ओके फाइन सो लास्ट क्लास लास्ट क्लास वी वर डिस्कसिंग मेजर्स टू कंट्रोल इन्फ्लेशन एंड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक वी हैव वी हैव डिस्कस मॉनेटरी मेजर्स देन फिजिकल मेजर्स एंड एट लास्ट वी डिस्कस्ड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव मेजर्स यूजिंग ऑल दीज मेजर्स इन्फ्लेशन इन द इकॉनमी आर कंट्रोल्ड बाय द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एंड द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड इवन द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ इंडिया इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर कंट्रोलिंग ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन राइट so this topic has been completed and now we are left with only two topics of this particular chapter and these two topics are interrelated to each other they are interrelated the topics are phillips curve and stagflation phillips curve and stagflation so first we'll discuss phillips curve and mind it this topic is very very important this topic is very very important phillips curve so this curve has been named after professor a w phillips professor a w phillips and phillips curve shows that it shows that there is there is an inverse relationship between there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment inflation and unemployment these two phenomena are inversely related to each other inflation and unemployment are inversely related to each other this is what phillips curve shows it shows that there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment so how these two variables are inversely related to each other as per phillips curve so inverse relationship it means what when unemployment in the economy will increase inflation will come down and when unemployment comes down in the economy inflation will go up this is how inflation is inversely affected by the movement of unemployment in the economy if unemployment in the economy increases that brings down, brings down inflation and if unemployment in the economy comes down that increases the rate of inflation this is what we mean by the inverse relationship between rate of inflation and unemployment is that clear is that clear so now we'll see the reason behind that why inflation is inversely affected by this is inflation rate and this is inversely affected by unemployment in the economy unemployment in the economy so if this comes down inflation increases why this happens this happens because when unemployment in the economy comes down when more and more people are you know losing the jobs in the economy there is massive unemployment in the economy then obviously the bargaining power of labor force is going to be affected isn't it the bargaining power of labor force will be affected and they will start willing to work at a lower wage rate hai na so even wage rate comes down in the economy now wage rate comes down in the economy as a result of this massive no what i'm saying that when unemployment comes down in the economy that means employment is increasing right people are getting the jobs you can see reduction in unemployment means what now people are getting employed in the economy right they are getting jobs in the economy so when people got when people get the jobs in the economy obviously this is going to strengthen their bargaining power 
when they will find that you know companies and firms are making a demand for massive labor force in the economy this is going to enhance the bargaining power of labor force since they are in demand right since they are demand they are demanded by firms and companies so that's going to increase the bargaining power of labor force right so wage rate as a result of this decrease in unemployment will increase right here wage rate increases and when wage in, when wage increases we know that wage is one of the important components of cost right it is one of the important components of cost so when wage increases in the economy that's going to increase the cost of production right and when cost of production increases then our producers will get compelled to sell their output at higher prices right our producers will get compelled to sell their output at higher prices so we'll have inflation in the economy right this is how this is how inflation is inversely related to unemployment in the economy right they are being you know aligned with each other with the help of what wage rate on the other hand if unemployment in the economy increases look here if unemployment in the economy increases then then it means there is massive unemployment in the economy people are losing out their jobs right so this is going to affect their bargaining power and they will start you know uh, accepting even the lower wages when massive people are being rendered unemployed they will start getting the you know they will be willing to accept even the lower wages so wage rate in the economy comes down and when wage comes down in the economy we will find that inflation also comes down because wage is one of the components of cost reduction in wage means reduction in cost and when cost reduces then our producers will be able to sell their output at lower prices we have lower inflation and in that manner you can see that unemployment in the economy affects inflation in an indirect manner right yes but that is not how that is not how a w flips curve linked inflation with unemployment no he linked inflation with unemployment with the help of wage rate right so that is what i am going to explain otherwise there are variety varieties of varieties of ways inflation is affected by unemployment in the economy but professor a w flips you know he he said that inflation would be affected by unemployment through change in wage rate when unemployment comes down when unemployment comes down people are getting the jobs in the economy then this is going to increase the wage rate and consequently inflation in the economy increases on the other hand if they are losing the jobs unemployment in the economy as in increasing then it's going to affect their bargaining power wage rate in the economy plummets and this reduction in wage rate will cause cost to come down right and when cost comes down obviously the producers will be able to sell their output at lower prices we have lower inflation this is how inflation is <coughs> indirectly related to unemployment in the economy right and when you plot this relationship in a graph when you plot, th plot this relationship in a graph what you get is called phillips curve right like on this vertical axis we represent what inflation and on this horizontal axis we represent unemployment and since there is an inverse relationship between these two you'll find that the phillips curve is downward sloping it is like this one this is downward sloping phillips curve right and this downward sloping phillips curve is saying that on the increase of inflation on the increase of unemployment inflation comes down look here we take the two points on this particular one right so this is point a corresponding to point a let's suppose unemployment in the economy is 2% right and inflation is let's suppose 5% right and now take point b when we move from a to b unemployment in the economy increases from 3% 2% to 3% right but inflation in the economy comes down from 5% to 4% you can see that on the increase of unemployment reductions in inflation is visible in this particular graph so when we connect these two points a and b this is going to 
you know reflect our phillips curve which is always downward sloping so downward sloping phillips curve indicate that inflation and unemployment do have the inverse or indirect relationship right in fact inflation is affected by unemployment in a inverse manner you got this point you got this point hmm so this is how phillips curve look like downward sloping on the vertical axis we have the inflation on the horizontal axis we have the unemployment in the economy <coughs> now we are going to generalize this relationship right we are going to generalize this relationship between inflation and unemployment look if i say that inflation and unemployment in the economy is inversely related look here this is inflation and this is unemployment if they are inversely related to each other that means inflation would be positively related to employment isn't it if inflation is inversely related to unemployment that means inflation would be positively related to employment because employment is just opposite of unemployment right so if we have seen that if unemployment increases if unemployment increases that means employment comes down right so if unemployment increases inflation comes down and if unemployment comes down inflation goes up right now when unemployment increases employment comes down unemployment comes down employment increases so now what kind of relationship you find between inflation and employment you can see on the decrease of unemployment inflation also comes comes down and on the increase of employment in the economy inflation also increases isn't it so point is that point is that inflation is the companion of employment more the employment in the economy more is the inflation less the employment in the economy lower is inflation right they move in same directions with each other right and this happens the same way because if unemployment is coming down that's going to affect the bargaining power of labor force right the bargaining power of labor force will be declined right wage rate comes down and when wage rate comes down so will inflation because cost of you know production will come down on the other hand if <coughs> employment increases in the economy that's going to increase the wage rate as well as inflation in the economy this is how inflation is directly related to employment is that clear now employment is the proxy of what employment is the proxy of what employment is the proxy of economic growth hai na it is the proxy of economic growth more the employment more the growth less the employment less the growth hai na so we come to know about growth by the percentage of people getting jobs in the economy right if more and more percentage of people are getting jobs in the economy that means we have a very high potential of growth in the economy they all are going to be productive in the economy they will start producing goods and services and that's going to you know augment our gdp our gdp will start increasing and that way will be able to achieve higher growth so more the employment more the growth less the employment less the growth so employment is always the proxy of growth it indicates about growth so instead of saying employment now you can say growth right both are same thing here right both are same thing so what does that mean that means inflation is companion of economic growth lower the growth <coughs> lower is inflation higher the growth higher is the inflation this is the final conclusion of phillips curve right final conclusion is that inflation is companion of what economic growth it moves in the same direction as growth is moving if growth is getting stronger in the economy you will find that even inflation is you know getting bigger and bigger and if growth rate comes down in the economy the good thing is that even inflation will come down right even inflation will come down so inflation is the companion of economic growth it goes the same way as the growth is going right they move in tandem with each other right this is the final conclusion
कि ग्रोथ एंड इन्फ्लेशन एग्जिस्ट इन द इकोनॉमी साइमल्टेनियसली मोर द ग्रोथ मोर द इन्फ्लेशन लेस द ग्रोथ लेस द इन्फ्लेशन सो सो द कंक्लूजन इज दैट द इकोनॉमी विथ हायर ग्रोथ रेट विल हैव हायर रेट ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन ऑल्सो है ना एंड द इकोनॉमी विथ लोअर ग्रोथ रेट विल हैव लोअर रेट ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन आई गिव यू द एग्जाम्पल इंडिया इंडिया इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ रेट इज बिफोर दिस पैंडेमिक इफ आई टॉक ऑफ है ना बिफोर दिस पैंडेमिक इंडिया इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ रेट वॉज लेस सपोज सेवन परसेंट पर एन एम राइट सेवन परसेंट पर एन एम एंड अमेरिका एट दैट टाइम वॉज ग्रोइंग बाई ऑनली वन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट टू टू परसेंट नॉट मोर देन दैट राइट दिस वॉज द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ अमेरिका अमेरिका हैज बीन ए सेचुरेटेड इकोनॉमी इट हैज ऑलरेडी अचीव इट्स पोटेंशियल सो देर इज नाउ नो फर्दर स्कोप फॉर ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट इन अमेरिका राइट सो इट वॉज ग्रोइंग बाई ऑनली वन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट टू टू परसेंट वाइल अमेरिका वॉज मेकिंग ए ग्रोथ बाई सेवन परसेंट सो विच इकॉनमी विल हायर इन्फ्लेशन सिंस इंडिया हैज ग्रेटर ग्रोथ रेट एज कंपेयर टू अमेरिका इंडिया विल हैव हायर इन्फ्लेशन राइट सो इन्फ्लेशन रेट इन इंडिया वॉज हॉबरिंग बिटवीन Let's suppose five to six percent, while inflation in America was somewhere one percent or point five percent only. So, economy with higher growth will have higher inflation, and economy with lower growth will have lower inflation. Inflation is always a companion of economic growth. Stronger the growth, more is the inflation. Lower the growth, less is the inflation. This is the final conclusion of final conclusion of Phillips curve. Is the point clear to everyone? या मंजोत नकुल क्या आप लोग समझ पाए क्या हम्म हम्म नहीं हियर इन्फ्लेशन इन्फ्लेशन हैज बीन द बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ ग्रोथ इट हैज बीन द बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ यू गेट इन्फ्लेशन यू गेट इन्फ्लेशन व्हेन द द द द you know growth accelerates in the economy because when growth accelerates in the economy demand for labor force increases and in fact demand for every resources in the economy increases and when demand for resources increases in the economy their price will also increase and that's going to inflate the cost of production right and now producers will have to you know uh, uh, hire those expensive cost of uh, expensive resources right so obviously at the end of the day they will have to Sell their output at higher prices will have the inflation, right? Hmm. No, when we study this Phillips curve, when we study this Phillips Phillips curve, <coughs> you have to keep this point in your mind that here inflation is being studied as function of unemployment, right? Inflation is is dependent variable, and unemployment is. independent variable right we are reading what way inflation is affected by unemployment we are not reading the other way around right na so this is unidirectional right how inflation is affected by unemployment in the economy that is our subject matter under phillips curve right aa gaya samajh mein hmm so this observation of you know professor a w phillips were accepted elsewhere everywhere and there was no disagreement over this point na economics were you know unanimous on this point right they have the agreement that that growth and inflation move together right inflation is the companion of economic growth on this point there was no disagreement among economics till 1970 because <laughs> this phillips curve came into force in 1958 only hai na a w phillips you know provided this uh, research paper paper in 1958 right so from 1958 to 1970 there has been no disagreement over this subject economics all over the world accepted this one that inflation will move in the same direction as growth is moving into right there was no disagreement then suddenly in 1972 to 73 a very strange phenomenon began to surface in the economy of us and in some developed countries right and that strange phenomenon was challenging the 
फाइंडिंग्स ऑफ फिलिप्स कर राइट एंड दैट फिनोमिन इज कॉल्ड द फिनोमिन ऑफ स्टैक फ्लेसन राइट सो विल सी दैट हाउ स्टैक फ्लेसन चैलेंजेस द वैलिडिटी ऑफ फिलिप्स कर वट हैपन इन अमेरिका इन नाइनटीन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थ्री राइट देन वी बिगेन टू यू नो कास्ट ए डाउट ऑन द ऑन द वैलिडिटी ऑफ फिलिप्स कर राइट सो बेसिकली इन नाइनटीन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थ्री अमेरिका वॉज कन्फ्रंटेड विथ ए कन्फ्रंटेड विथ ए वेरी बिजार सिचुएशन दिस सिचुएशन लेटर ऑन वॉज कॉल्ड स्टैक फ्लेसन स्टैग फ्लेसन so now we'll study stagflation and we'll relate this topic with phillips curve and how this stagflation began to challenge the validity of phillips curve we'll discuss them right so first the conceptual meaning of stagflation what we mean by stagflation stagflation is a combination of two words it's a combination of two words it is first stagnation of the economy plus inflation stagnation of the economy plus <coughs> inflation <coughs> so far we have seen that inflation inflation remains with what inflation remains with growth right this was the finding of philips curve a w philips inflation exists with growth but in, here in america it was found that inflation is not existing with growth it is it is existing with what stagnation right here stagnation means what here stagnation means If something is stagnant, that means there has been no growth at all, है ना? Stagnation means no growth or slowdown or recession of the economy, है ना? You know, you you know this word ना? Stagnation. If something is stagnant, there has been no increase or decrease at all, है ना? That particular entity is constant, right? So if there is stagnation in the economy, <coughs> that means there has been no growth at all. we have the slowdown or we have the recession so basically this indicates slowdown in the economy or <coughs> this indicates recession in the economy recession in the economy plus this is inflation <coughs> and this is how you define the concept of stagflation stagflation refers to a very high rate of inflation existing in the economy along with recession hai na a very high rate of inflation a very high rate of inflation a very high rate of inflation existing with existing with recession in the economy recession or slowdown recession or slowdown is called is called stagflation right usually what we find we find that inflation exist with what growth but here we find that inflation is existing with what slowdown which is just opposite of growth hai na when we have growth gdp increases when we have recession gdp comes down right hai na so this is how inflation began to surface in us economy along with slowdown and this phenomena was later on called stagflation now you see that the phenomenon of stagflation was challenging the validity of philips curve right it was challenging the validity of philips curve philips curve was saying that inflation in the economy will exist with growth but that's not happening in the economy rather inflation in the economy is with slowdown where there has been no production there has been 
unemployment in the economy right you getting this point so inflation is when existing with slowdown or unemployment this is called stagflation which negates the validity of which negates the validity of what phillips curve hai na it negates the validity of phillips curve is the point clear <coughs> so why this happens we'll explain later on but first we'll discuss why stagflation is a bigger economic problem look when inflation is there in the economy along with growth inflation is not not that troublesome right because it's existing with growth when we have growth in the economy people do have the jobs they have the employment they have the income right so they can easily bear with the prices or increase in prices Are you getting my point or not? है ना? When inflation exists with growth, inflation is not that troublesome because people do have the growth in the economy. They do have the employment and income. So with those income, they can easily bear with the rising prices that we call inflation. So inflation is not that you know troublesome. But when inflation exists in the economy along with recession, recession is proxy of unemployment, right? so we have double whammy in the economy you can see on the one hand we have inflation on the other hand we have unemployment in the economy right we have unemployment in the economy growth is the proxy of employment recession and slowdown is the proxy of unemployment right so now we have you know twins problem in the economy we have double whammy the people do have the problem in terms of inflation when at the time of their unemployment they are losing out their jobs but they have to bear with the higher prices in the economy and that's going to enhance their economic plight hai na their economic plight increases at the time of stagflation so there lies the problem hai na so inflation can exist with growth that's not going to be that you know that harmful for the economy and its people but if inflation exists with economic slowdown or unemployment then obviously it's going to be creating double problems for the people they have to bear with higher prices at the time of declining income and losing out their jobs that increases their economic sufferings or hardships so this is the difficulty about the stagflation is that clear hmm. <coughs> now we have discussed the monetary policy so here even the monetary policy will become ineffective in controlling stagflation we cannot simply employ the monetary policy to control the problem of stagflation because you have you have worst of both the worlds you can say you know yes you have worst worst of both the worlds you have to deal with both the problems you have the problems of inflation as well as unemployment right so in that situations you cannot you cannot afford to afford to you know douse the fire of inflation simultaneously increasing the growth in our economy that's not possible at all because we have seen that in order to control inflation what we have to do in order to control inflation we have to pursue the contractionary monetary policy rate of interest has to be increased but when rate of interest increases in the economy that hampers the process of growth in the economy right so this problem gets you know aggravated the problem of unemployment or stagnation becomes worse than before though we can control inflation right so by pursuing the contractionary monetary policy we can control inflation but that's going to make this problem of stagnation of the economy worse than before on the other hand if the concern of reserve bank of india is to control the stagnation or mitigate the impact of economic slowdown then obviously the policy has to be expansionary by nature it is expansionary i mean monetary policy that will help reserve bank of india overcoming the problem of unemployment right but that's going to increase the rate of inflation further right and in that manner both the policy whether it is expansionary or contractionary both the monetary policy will be completely failed and we cannot you know simply uh, bring the economy out of the depth of stagflation so this is something we have to be uh, you know causes of we have to ensure that the inflation in the economy exists along with growth and not with economic slowdown or unemployment but why this happened in america 
Is your first class? Okay. Where you have come from? MP. Money problem. Madhya Pradesh. Okay. You all have come from Madhya Pradesh. For how many days you have been here in Delhi? One and a half year. Month only. Okay. And you are pursuing your study in DU or elsewhere? Which college? It is not in North Campus, na? No? Off Campus. Okay, fine. And uh, what are your subjects? Economics. Okay, you are pursuing honors in economics. Okay, program. So economics is there. Which year you are in? First year. Okay. English and history. English and history. Okay, fine. So uh, this class is about the Indian economy. I have completed some chapters already. Like we have completed Reserve Bank of India, credit control, liquidity management, and right now we are discussing inflation. Right? Inflation. And this is the last topic of inflation. I am discussing the Phillips curve and stagflation. Right? So you people will have to wait for some time till I start the new chapter, entirely new chapters. And even in those chapters, you may have some difficulty. To ensure that you don't have any difficulty in any of the chapters that you will be attending here, you will have to uh, watch my videos. Right? Videos are available on my previous classes. Right? So one by one, you can refer to those videos. So far, you are concerned since your subject is economics. I don't think that that would be much difficult for you. But maybe you are not from the economics background. So initially, you will have some amount of difficulties. right? But if you keep on watching the videos, then you'll get the idea what topic or chapters I'm going through, right? Apart from that, you have to, uh, you know, commence uh, NCRT books. Read NCRT books from class 9th. You don't have the NCRT of economics for class 6 or class 7th or class 8. Right? In history or polity, you have even the class 6 or class 7th NCRT. Economics start from class 9. So you can start from class 9, then class 10, Class 11th NCRT is going to be the most fundamental book for UPSC aspirants, right? And that book is Development of Indian Economy. Ah, yes, Indian Economic Development. That is the most fundamental and the best book available on the development of Indian economy. You get the idea how the Indian economy has been able to acquire this kind of structure today, right? So we see the you know, growth and development of Indian economy right from the time of independence, right? What happened in 1947, then planning, then economic reforms, and in spite of that, we have some economic challenges in terms of, you know, poverty, then unemployment, then rural development. These are the chapters in that, in that particular book. Right? So first you complete uh, class 9th and class 10th NCRT, and then, and then you can just, you know, read this book of class 11th, twice or thrice till the time you get the entire idea and uh, ingrained in your mind right that will help you a lot right <coughs> so this is stagflation have you any idea about stagflation you know when the economy get hmm? inflation is also there yes inflation is is, is existing with the recession na? Uh, yeah, prices are increasing, but we have the slowdown, we have the unemployment in the economy, right? And where this happened, for the first time where this phenomena was observed, this surfaced in the US economy in 1973 for the first time, right? Till then, till then, you know, this was the, this was the, you know, this was the uh, uh, statement that was accepted worldwide among the economics that inflation exists with, with, with economic growth. But for the first time, it was found that inflation may not exist with economic growth. In fact, it's existing with slowdown or recession in the economy. So it was going to negate the validity of Phillips curve, right? So this happened in 1973. But why this happened? What are the causes of stagflation? So basically, stagflation is caused by 
an adverse supply shock in the economy causes of stagflation so first important cause is an adverse an adverse supply shocks of some critical inputs right when supply get disrupted in the economy when supply get disrupted in the economy that may engender the problem of stagflation so this happened in 1973 we found that we found that you know prices of crude oil increased many fold it was the time when there was there was a kind of war between arab and israel right arab is considered to be the leader of what opec hai na you know opec have you heard of opec opec is what organization for petroleum exporting countries right this organization consists of all the leading exporters of crude oil hai na ma'am aap is pe aa jaiye piche thoda awaaz kam aayega आप सुन पा रहे सो देर वॉज कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन अरब एंड इसराइल एंड द यूएस ऑलवेज टेक द साइड ऑफ इसराइल है ना एंड दिस टाइम ऑल्सो इन 1973, हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थ्री द यूएस टूक द साइड ऑफ इसराइल एंड दैट यू नो मेड अरब एंग्री विथ होम यूएस यूएस यूज टू इम्पोर्ट लॉर्ड्स ऑफ क्रोडल फ्रॉम ओपे कंट्रीज राइट एंड taking the advantage of this situation arab increased prices of crude oil many fold right suddenly the price of petrol in america diesel petrol and all other petroleum products began to inflate significantly you know they went through the roof you know they went through the roof and that caused the problem of inflation because once we have you know uh, expensive petrols in the economy that's going to increase the transportation cost and that's going to you know cascade into into higher inflation that will snowball into higher inflation so america was in the grip of higher inflation as a result of this increase in prices of crude oil at the same time the uh, units in america the production units in america that were using all these you know feed stock like petrol diesel kerosene they found it's very expensive to use them as raw material so they began to shut down their enterprises one by one hai na price went through the roof hai na price began very significantly you know higher so those industrial units now were not able to afford the prices of petrol and diesel they decided to shut down their operations enterprises one by one and that rendered many people unemployed in the economy you got this point so that rendered many people unemployed in the economy so we have double whammy in the economy we have double whammy in terms of inflation as well as unemployment and the single factor was responsible for this and this was the significant increase in price of crude oil right so whenever there is whenever there is disruption in supply whenever there is disru disruption in supply that may engender the problem of stagflation in the economy you got this point like today even today at present time we are in midst of you know covid right so covid has also engendered this kind of situation in many countries including india there has been a disruption in supply all over the world right so so far as india is concerned you know we are getting so many raw material from chinese economy you know that hai na even even the api api which is used for the production of medicines in our country are being imported from china but there has been a kind of disruption in the supply coming from china and that inflated the price of raw materials in our country multiple times so we have a kind of cost plus inflation today right hai na we have cost plus inflation in our country and we know that as a result of this you know uh, winding up of all the activities at the behest of the government there has been massive unemployment in our country hai na so we have unemployment as a result of this outbreak of covid and we have inflation in the economy as the prices of raw materials today have become expensive 
right as a result of this adverse supply shocks so when we have adverse supply shocks both the problems will exist in the economy and this is called stagflation so this happened in america as a result of increase in price of crude oil and even the prices of agriculture output in america went you know uh, became very high at that point of time there has been a massive you know reduction in production in russia as well as european countries in 1970 right and america in order to supply the agriculture output to these countries you know exported a massive quantity of those commodities and that caused a kind of you know dearth of agriculture output in in american economy so as a result of this scarcity of agriculture output as massive quantity were exported to european and russian economy there was dearth and as a result of this dearth of agriculture output price of those outputs you know went through the roof they increased many fold they increased many fold so there was shortage of agriculture output in the economy and we know that many industries are are using those agriculture output as raw material especially the agro based industries or food processing industries right they require all these agricultural output as raw material so when there was scarcity the prices of those raw materials increased and that translated into higher inflation in the economy so we had inflation along with economic slowdown and this phenomena is called stagflation clear सेवेंटी वन इट वॉज द पॉइंट ऑफ सेवेंटी वन ब्रिटेन वुड सिस्टम जो है ब्रेक डाउन हो गया था है ना हमने ब्रिटेन वुड सिस्टम को नाइनटीन फोर्टी फोर से इनिशिएट किया था बट इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन देर वॉज ए कम्प्लीट ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ ब्रिटेन वुड सिस्टम राइट तो ये भी एक पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम था लेकिन उसका इम्पैक्ट भी हुआ है ना जैसे कि अमेरिका की करेंसी की वैल्यू जो है वो क्या हो गई बहुत ज़्यादा आपका अप्रिशिएट हो गया जिस वजह से वहाँ पर इम्पोर्ट जो है आपका एक्सपेंसिव हो गया और उस वजह से हुई वहां पे इन्फ्लेशन हुआ था ठीक है श्रीलंका क्राइसिस इज ऑफ वेरियस डायमेंशन इट्स नॉट अबाउट द क्राइसिस ऑफ यू नो अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट ओनली है ना श्रीलंका हैज ए वेरी हाई फिजिकल डेफिसिट इन द अकाउंट देन श्रीलंका हैज नो फोरेक्स रिजर्व श्रीलंका हैज नो रॉ मेटेरियल अवेलेबल इन द इकोनॉमी Sri Lanka has food scarcity, है ना No, I mean sufficient amount of food food grains are available for its people. So problem is confronted by Sri Lankan people from many fronts, right? So problem is of severe nature, right? But America didn't have that kind of problem at that time, right? It has the problem in terms of inflation as well as slowdown, and the same economic situation uh, uh, surfaced in the economy of India in 1900, 94, or 93. right in 1994 there was the impact of gulf war you know gulf war bet was between whom gulf war was between iraq and iran hai na these two countries are the major supplier of crude oil they are the they are the members of whom the opec right but one is shia dominated other is sunni dominated right and they are fighting with each other so this time in 1991 92 they indulged in war and that disrupted the supply of crude oil in international market so the price of crude oil increased twice hai na overnight the price of crude oil increased twice and that resulted into the problem of stagflation in our country it lasted for 3 years from 1994 to 1997 there was the problem of stagflation so it may occur in any economies and now we are more vulnerable as compared to the us economy now us economy has become completely dependent us is not importing crude oil right from 2017 onwards you must be knowing that there has been a massive production of shale gas and shale gas production in america has you know made america completely sufficient i mean self sufficient and america is now not importing those crude oil but india is still importing 80% of our requirement right so we are still vulnerable to the risk of what stagflation every time there has been an increase in crude oil prices there is possibility of stagflation in the economy
because of environmental impact what biden has done no but but america has been now the exporter of crude oil america india ko bhi export kar raha iska dependence jo hai gulf countries ke upar kam ho gaya middle east ke upar kam ho gaya but we are still dependent on those countries as i told that we import 80% of our domestic requirement right so that puts india in a kind of jeopardy we are vulnerable to the risk of stagflation every time there is increase in prices of crude oil hai na abhi bhi price of crude oil kya ho raha increase ho raha lekin there has been some subdued demand in international market especially because of you know uh, outbreak of covid once again in chinese economy but once china economy start reviving you will find that demand for crude oil will start increasing and in that point of time the price of crude oil will further increase that put pressure on indian economy ha samajh mein aap logo ko kya isko off karna hai bahut awaaz aa raha na आकाश इसको ऑफ कर दीजिए एसी तो ऑन है ना सो व्हाट नीड्स टू बी डन हियर व्हाट इज द वे आउट फ्रॉम स्टैक फ्लेशन I told you why this is a concern because we have the double whammy in the economy. We have the twins problem in the economy, right? Inflation and unemployment, both of them exist simultaneously, and that makes the task of Reserve Bank of India really difficult. And right? if you employ the expansionary monetary policy, that will help you overcome the problem of unemployment. That's but that's going to aggravate the situation of inflation. If you employ the contractionary monetary policy, that will lower the rate of inflation, but that's going to aggravate the situation of stagnation in the economy. So that puts Reserve Bank of India in a kind of policy dilemma. So what is way out? How we can control stagflation? So a new branch of economics was germinated at this point of time. When economists all over all over the world, they found that. Uh, that the conventional monetary and fiscal policy is not going to help us out right then a new branch of economics was germinated and that branch of economics is called supply side economics hai na supply side economics so look at this diagram this will give you idea why stagflation occurs in the economy very simple diagram diagram i am going to draw here this is price and this is quantity demand and supply right demand curve we know aggregate demand curve downward sloping as demand is inversely related to price more the price lower is the demand and vice versa supply curve is upward sloping hai na so this is the point of equilibrium this is the point of equilibrium this is total quantity demanded and supply in the economy and this is inflation this is inflation prevailing in the economy right this is the gdp this is the quantity demanded as well as supplied that means this is our gdp and this is our price you got this point and now if there is an adverse supply shock right this is aggregate supply and this is demand so aggregate supply curve will shift leftward you know it will shift leftward like here now new aggregate supply curve is s1 and this is intersecting the demand curve at this point what you find now at this point you find that inflation in the economy has increased than before hai na you can see inflation has increased from pi to pi 1 isn't it inflation has increased what about our gdp gdp has decreased from q to q0 isn't it when inflation increases and gdp comes down this is what we mean by stagflation right we have inflation we have inflation along with what slow down reduction in gdp means there is slow down there is recession in the economy hai na so this is slow down in the economy look here this is slow down in the economy so this diagram 
you know depicts the problem of stagflation this depicts the problem of stagflation here hai na loss in gdp and increase in inflation now if we have to rectify this situation if we have to rectify this situation what we have to do is to ensure that supply curve is is where put once again on its previous position right this is called supply side economics supply side economics supply side economics so till 1971 there has been there has been you know emphasis on demand management in the economy right how to manage aggregate demand in the economy in order to rectify the balance imbalances in terms of inflation and unemployment nobody wa was talking about supply side right like reserve bank of india's emphasis was on managing the aggregate demand even our government through its fiscal policy were trying to manage the aggregate demand but this was the point of time when an another branch of economics was was surfaced and this is called supply side economics that gives you an idea that now instead of working on management of aggregate demand you have to you have to make an efforts to augment the supply in the economy once you start augmenting the supply supply will come to its own position right whereby the gdp or productions will increase and inflation will come down in the economy and that way will jettison the situation of stagflation right so to jettison the situation of stagflation we have to augment the supply we have to ensure that the disruption in supply is being rectified as soon as possible right so what exactly america did in 1973 and even you know after a very brief hiatus of 6 years in 1979 even america was confronted with this stagflation 79 mein kya hua tha 73 mein arab aur israel ka war hua tha usse price bad gaya tha 79 mein kya hua tha afghanistan invasion yes that also happened but uh, i'm talking what happened in iran ईरान का मॉडर्नाइजेशन जो है ईरान का मॉडर्नाइजेशन स्टार्ट किया गया था अमेरिका के बिहेस्ट में है ना अमेरिका हमेशा अपने पसंद का आदमी जो है इन कंट्रीज़ में बैठाना चाहता है सद्दाम हुसैन पसंद नहीं था सद्दाम हुसैन मारा गया है ना अमेरिका की ये डिप्लो फॉरेन पॉलिसी रही है कि इन कंट्रीज़ में जो है हमेशा वो क्या कर चाहता है अपना आदमी को वहाँ पर बैठाया जाए है ना so even this time america interfered interfered in the economy of iran wanted to bring about change in regime right so this is called modernization of iran economy and that you know boomerang in the economy that boomerang in the economy resulted into higher prices of crude oil hai na crude oil ke prices jo hai fir badh gaya america was once again affected by stagflation theek hai so ultimately us samay jo hai na us samay अमेरिका का जो फेडरल रिजर्व का जो चेयरमैन था उसका नाम वोलकर था वी ओ एल के ए आर है ना वोलकर वोलकर वॉज द चेयरपर्सन ऑफ फेडरल रिजर्व एंड ही टू के वेरी बोल्ड डिसीजन टू ब्रिंग द इकॉनमी आउट ऑफ स्टैकफ्लेशन दिस इज कॉल्ड दिस इज कॉल्ड इन इकोनॉमिक्स वोलकर इफेक्ट राइट वोलकर ने क्या किया था देखिए यहाँ पे मैंने आपको क्या बताया यू हैव द ट्विन प्रॉब्लम इन द इकॉनमी यू हैव प्रॉब्लम इन टर्म्स ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन एज वेल एज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट राइट एंड no monetary policy is going to help you out because if contraction is being implemented it will it will lower the inflation but aggravate the situation of unemployment if expansion is implemented this will this will overcome the problem of unemployment in the economy but aggravate the situation of inflation what to do but this this person volker took a very bold decision he decided to increase the re, i mean repo rate and interest rate significantly so that the problem of inflation can be stamped out completely right unhone rate of interest ko itna zyada increase kiya tha taki kya ho inflation pehle kam ho yes for some time the situation of unemployment got aggravated hai na the situation of unemployment became worse than before but once you know inflation started coming down that inspired the confidence of people in the policy decision right that inspired the confidence of people in policy decision and then later on the producers began to invest more in the economy right as they became confident that our policy makers are going to you know rescue 
all of us from this situation right so now they became more optimistic more confident and they began to spur up investment in the economy and once investment started increasing we could overcome even the problem of unemployment is that clear aa samajh mein aap log ko hai na to ek to ye kiya gaya aur supply side economics mein aapko ye karna hai supply ko augment karne ke liye aapko jaise supply ko augment karne ke liye sabse acha incentive kya hai aap logo ko tax mein relief do hai na tax mein major cut kiya jata hai tax ko कट किया जाता है दैट इज गोइंग टू एनहांस इंड्यूसमेंट टू वर्क जैसे हम पर्सनल टैक्स टैक्स देते हैं ना मान लो कि मेरा टैक्स जो है थर्टी परसेंट का कैटेगरी में मैं आ रहा हूं तीस परसेंट मुझे टैक्स देना पड़ता है अपना डिस्पोजेबल इनकम का ठीक है मेरे को लग रहा बहुत ज्यादा यार इसलिए मैं क्या करता हूं कि समटाइम्स आई डोंट प्रेफर टू वर्क है ना आई वॉन्ट टाइम विथ माई फैमिली है ना मैं चाहता हूँ कि यार Why to work? है ना थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ माई इनकम इज गोइंग टू बी टेकन अवे बाई द गवर्नमेंट दैट्स गोइंग टू अफेक्ट माई इंड्यूसमेंट टू वर्क राइट सो इंस्टेड ऑफ वर्किंग आई वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड माई टाइम विद माई फ्रेंड्स माई फैमिली मेम्बर्स बट वंस यू लोअर द टैक्स इन द इकॉनमी नाउ गवर्नमेंट से सर वज इज यू डोंट हैव टू पे थर्टी परसेंट जस्ट नीड टू पे टेन परसेंट दैट्स गोइंग टू एनहांस माई इंड्यूसमेंट टू वर्क है ना आई विल फाइंड दैट यू नो आफ्टर टैक्स माई सैलरी इज गोइंग टू बी increased that instead of spending time more with my family i would put more hours into the classroom right so when you effect a cut in tax that's going to enhance the inducement to work hai na and once more and more people induces to work in the economy that's going to increase our gdp supply will increase and that's going to help both ways hai na when supply increases that cool down inflation in the economy as well as more and more people will get employment in the economy right so this is what we have to do so that is in case of personal tax even business tax jo hai na usko bhi kam kiya jana chahiye jaise corporate tax in india mein income tax we have two variants of income tax one is called individual income tax or personal income tax like people like you and me pay to the government right and second one is called corporate tax corporate tax is tax on income of companies right company bhi income earn kar rahi hai unko bhi tax pay karna hota hai hai na unko bhi tax pay karna hai उनके इनकम के ऊपर जो टैक्स लगता है उसको कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स कहते हैं तो जब कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स को कम किया जाएगा जैसे इंडिया में किया गया व्हेन दिस वाज डन बाय द बाय द ये प्रेजेंट फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया मिसेस निर्मला सीतारमन जी इन 2019 है ना कॉर्पोरेट टैक्स इन इन आर कंट्री यूज टू बी थर्टी परसेंट दैट हैज बिन ब्रॉड डाउन टू ओनली ट्वेंटी एंड यू मस्ट बी नोइंग दैट फॉर द न्यू कंपनीज दैट विल सी द लाइट ऑफ द डे by 2023 they will have to pay only 15% of corporate tax right so you can see that now corporate tax has been reduced from 30% to 22% and for the new company it has been further slashed to only 15% and that is going to incentivize our investors when they have to pay lower tax to the government obviously they will spur up investment hai na they will put more money as investment and that's going to create avenues of employment in the economy employment will increase and that's going to cool down even inflation and that is how you know through supply side measures in which the important instrument is cut in tax rate hai na cut in tax rate we just get rid of the situation of stagflation aage samajh mein aap logo ko supply ko aur improve karne ke liye kya kiya jata hai na jitna supply mein you know constraint hota hai hai na we are going to ease those constraint जैसे समटाइम्स क्या है ना इंपोर्ट ड्यूटी जो है काफी ज्यादा होता है इट्स ए काइंड ऑफ ऑब्स्टेकल है ना इट्स ए काइंड ऑफ ऑब्स्टेकल व्हेन इंपोर्ट ड्यूटीज आर वेरी हाई सो व्हाट गवर्नमेंट नीड्स टू डू हियर कट डाउन द इंपोर्ट ड्यूटी व्हेन वी कट डाउन इंपोर्ट ड्यूटी इंपोर्ट विल इंक्रीज एंड दैट्स गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द डोमेस्टिक अवेबिलिटी ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज प्राइस विल वंस अगेन कम डाउन सो सच मेजर्स कैन be put into the category of supply side economics which becomes helpful to deal with the situation of stagflation america did so and all other countries are also you know devising various methods whereby supply can be increased and we can jettison the problem of stagflation aa gaya samajh mein clear hai hmm. so we are done with this chapter now we are going to start a new chapter hai na a new chapter so as of now we have completed first reserve bank of india second monetary policy right and third third one was inflation now this is the fourth chapter chapter in which i am going to discuss the banking system in our country hai right? na so next chapter is banking system 
in India. So, <clears throat> in this chapter, we'll discuss only those segments which are relevant, which are more important from UPSC perspective. Anna? Otherwise, I'm not going to discuss what is bank, anna? types of banks, when banks were established in our country. Those fundamentals are not useful for the aspirant of UPSC. Right? If you are banking, you know, informational questions are also being asked. But here we'll discuss and confine ourselves to only those topics which are relevant, which are more important from perspective of UPSC. Anna? But yes, we have to know what bank is because we are going to study about banking system. In fact, right now we are discussing the banking segment. And in the banking segment, the uppermost bank is the central bank about which we have already discussed. Right? Now we'll discuss all other banks that uh, that operate in our economy like commercial banks, cooperative bank, regional rural banks, then small finance bank, then payment banks. Right? All these banks are being established in our country under the supervision of Reserve Bank of India and we'll discuss them one by one. But here very fundamental question is what is bank? Hmm. Bank kya hai? Chali, aap log hi bataiye. What is bank? Yes. Hmm. Very good, very good. This is an organization that accepts deposit from people and provide them credit. This is the functional definition of bank. You define banks on the basis of what function it performs. So if you go to bank, you find that bank is either accept, accepting deposits from people or bank is lending money. Bank is providing credit in the economy. So this is the most important functions of bank in our country acceptance of deposits and provision of credit in the economy right so bank is basically a financial institution it's a basically financial institution that accept deposits from people and provide them credit or loan this is how you define bank and in our country there are multiple kinds of banks but the dominant bank in our country is commercial banks so first we'll study about commercial banks commercial banks first we'll see the classification of commercial bank right your main motive of commercial bank is to maximize profit and they are in the economy they are in the business so that they can maximize their profit and they're not for charity Commercial banks are not for charity. Their main concern is to earn profit and maximize them. Right? So, these commercial banks in our country are of three types. Right? On the basis of their ownership, then they can be of three types. First one is called, is called public sector commercial bank. This is called public sector commercial bank. Then we have some private banks in our country and then we have some foreign commercial banks foreign commercial banks right this classification has been done on the basis of the ownership of the bank public sector commercial banks are those banks which are owned by whom which are owned by government of india Government of India is the owner of all public sector commercial bank. Right now, how many banks are there in our country? You know, number of public sector commercial bank has been on decline. It has been on decline. The largest commercial bank is State Bank of India. Right? Some of the examples are State Bank of India, PNB, right? PNB, Allahabad Bank, Bank of Baroda. Right? All these banks are public sector commercial bank owned by the government of India. Right? And their numbers have been on constant decline since 2016 as public sector commercial banks are being 
मर्ज टूगेदर राइट है ना उनको मर्ज किया जा रहा एंड द प्रोसेस वो स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम फिफ्थ ऑफ अप्रैल 2016, राइट ऑन फिफ्थ ऑफ अप्रैल 2016 six banks were merged with state bank of india and that time number of public sector commercial bank used to be 27 look here i'm talking i'm talking of 2016 in this year you know public sector commercial bank used to be 27 in numbers and then what happened six banks were merged with state bank of india five banks were associate banks of state bank of india you know associate banks of state bank of india like there used to be state bank of hyderabad state bank of travancore state bank of bikaner and jaipur sune hai aap log state bank of mysore state bank of indore hai na so this five you know associate bank of state bank of india was merged with state bank of india and then government had created a bank in 2013 this was bhartiya mahila bank hai na a new bank was was established by government of india this was called bhartiya mahila bank even this bhartiya mahila bank the sixth one was merged with state bank of india so the number of public sector commercial bank got reduced from 27 to 21 right and then there was the second stage of merger right in the second round of merger some more banks right some more public sector commercial banks were merged with some other public sector commercial bank like like i give the example of oriental uh, oriental bank of commerce have you heard of this bank obc have you heard of this bank oriental bank of commerce nahi jante ho yaar kya baat kar oriental bank of commerce ye public sector commercial bank hua tha united bank of india have you heard of this hai na united bank of india oriental bank of commerce these two banks were merged with punjab national bank pnb to jante hai na है ना तो पीएनबी अभी भी है लेकिन इसमें और दो पब्लिक सेक्टर कमर्शियल बैंक्स को मर्ज कर दिया गया ओरिएंटल बैंक ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड यूनाइटेड बैंक ऑफ इंडिया है ना लाइकवाइज देना बैंक का नाम सुना है कभी देता नहीं है है ना पैसे मांगने जाओ पैसा खत्म है है ना देना बैंक नाम है खाली बस है ना सो देना बैंक वॉज देयर देन विजया बैंक वॉज देयर दिस टू बैंक वर मर्ज विथ बैंक ऑफ बड़ौदा राइट एंड दैट वे द नंबर ऑफ पब्लिक सेक्टर कमर्शियल बैंक हैज टूडे गॉट रिड्यूस टू ओनली ट्वेल्व है ना वी हैव ट्वेल्व पब्लिक सेक्टर कमर्शियल बैंक द लार्जेस्ट बैंक स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया राइट सो दे आर ऑन बाई गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया देन वी हैव अनदर कैटेगरी ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक इन आर कंट्री क्या है ये ठीक है रख दो पीछे कुछ काम का होगा अनदर कैटेगरी ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक दिस इज कॉल private commercial banks they are owned by private individuals like you and me hai na jaise some of the private commercial banks in our country is hdfc hai na hdfc then icic bank yes bank fir axis bank aur kotak mahindra bank sune hai na kotak mahindra bank aur do naye banks aur khole gaye hain hai na 7 saal ho gaye ab ek idfc इसका नाम अब पड़ गया है आईडीएफसी फर्स्ट बैंक क्योंकि फर्स्ट कैपिटल के साथ इसका मर्जर हो गया दो साल पहले है ना सो नाउ दिस बैंक इज कॉल्ड आईडीएफसी फर्स्ट बैंक एंड वन मोर बैंक वो स्टैब्लिश इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन दिस इज बंधन बैंक सुने हैं बंधन बैंक है ना सो ऑल दिस बैंक आर प्राइवेट सेक्टर कमर्शियल बैंक दे ऑन बाई प्राइवेट इंडिविजुअल लाइक यू एंड मे गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट द ऑनर राइट एंड येट अनदर कैटेगरी ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक इज कॉल्ड फॉरन कमर्शियल बैंक these commercial banks belong to different countries but they have been granted license by reserve bank of india to operate as commercial bank in our country hai na their headquarters and ownership they both lie outside india right hai na they are foreign commercial bank but have been given license by reserve bank of india to work as commercial bank in our country so they are accepting deposits from people and they are giving loans in our indian economy just like the private and public sector commercial bank what are the examples of some of the foreign commercial banks you hardly find them in rural areas hai na mostly they are in urban areas so some of the foreign commercial banks bank of india mein hai kya acha jo dekha hai wo batao sunne wala mat batao jo aapne dekha hai wo batao 
आपने कोई भी बैंक देखा है जो कि दूसरे देश का है हमारे भारत में काम कर रहा है हाँ बोलिए आप एच एस का नाम सुना है अरे नहीं सुना है हांगकॉन्ग एंड संघाई कॉरपोरेशन बैंक ऑफ है ना बैंक नहीं सुने हो एच एच एस बी सी अभी यूके की बैंक है ये हांगकॉन्ग की बैंक हुआ करती थी लेकिन इसका एक्विजिशन हुआ है नाउ द हेडक्वार्टर ऑफ दिस बैंक इज लोकेटेड इन वेयर यूके राइट एच एस बी सी ओके फाइन इसको आपने नहीं सुना है कोई बात नहीं आपने सुना होगा सिटी बैंक है ना सिटी बैंक सुने हो सिटी बैंक यार सिटी बैंक जो है ये भी अमेरिकन बैंक है या फिर आपने सुना होगा बैंक ऑफ अमेरिका सुने हो इंडिया में है कुछ ब्रांचेस या आपने सुना होगा बार्कलेज बैंक सुने हो बार्कलेज बार्कलेज बैंक देन यू हैव बीएनपी परिवा सुने हो ये फ्रांस की सबसे बड़ी बैंक है बीएनपी परिवा देन डिओस बैंक सुने हो नहीं चलो कोई बात नहीं अब थोड़ा सा ध्यान भी देना है ना जब आप लोग जा रहे हो ना तो थोड़ा देखो कि कौन बैंक है है ना एंड देन ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट वेदर दिस बैंक बिलोंग टू इंडिया और नॉट है ना सो डिओस बैंक बी एन पी पारिबा एच एस पी सी सी डी बैंक बैंक ऑफ अमेरिका बी एन पी बैंक ऑफ अमेरिका है ना बाकलिस बैंक देन स्टैंडर्ड एंड चार्टर्ड ये जरूर सुने होंगे सुने हो स्टैंडर्ड एंड चार्टर्ड सुने हो ये यू के की बैंक है राइट सो दिस बैंक बिलोंग टू डिफरेंट कंट्रीज बट दे हैव बिन गिवन लाइसेंस बाई रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया टू ऑपरेट एज कमर्शियल बैंक इन आर कंट्री सो दिस थ्री काइंड ऑफ बैंक आर आर ऑपरेटिंग इन आर इकोनॉमी राइट सो दिस इज हाउ वी क्लासीफाई कमर्शियल बैंक पब्लिक सेक्टर कमर्शियल बैंक प्राइवेट बैंक देन फॉरन कमर्शियल बैंक फर्स्ट बट दिस इज नॉट हाउ रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया क्लासीफाई कमर्शियल बैंक This is a classification we make about the commercial banks on the basis of their ownership. If ownership lies with government, it is called public sector commercial bank. If it is with private individual, this is called private banks. And if ownership lies outside India, this is called foreign commercial bank. But this is not how Reserve Bank of India classify commercial bank. According to Reserve Bank of India, commercial banks are of two types. According to Reserve Bank of India, commercial banks are of two types. Scheduled commercial banks and non-scheduled commercial banks. Scheduled commercial banks and non-scheduled commercial banks. This is how Reserve Bank of India classifies our commercial bank. So now we'll see the difference between scheduled and non-scheduled commercial banks. Scheduled and non-scheduled commercial banks. We'll see the difference. से शेड्यूल कमर्शियल बैंक आर जस्ट लाइक रिकग्नाइज बैंक दे आर रिकग्नाइज बाई रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एंड ऑल दिज बैंक हैव बिन पुट इन टू द सेकेंड शेड्यूल ऑफ आर बी एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फोर है ना ऑल दिज बैंक हैव बिन पुट इन टू द सेकेंड शेड्यूल ऑफ आर बी एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फोर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट आर बी एक्ट नाइनटीन थर्टी फोर राइट and this rb act 1934 has been divided in different chapters those chapters are called schedule hai na like our constitution has different parts hai na every part is about every aspect of our polity like the third the third part of constitution is about fundamental rights hai na in the third part of our constitution we study about the fundamental rights right likewise rbi act of 1934 has been split into different chapters each chapter is devoted to different aspect of banking in our country the second chapter or second schedule is about commercial bank hai na second chapter is devoted to commercial bank and the banks which find their places in the second chapter of rbi act 1934 are called schedule commercial bank in fact they are recognized by recognized by reserve bank of india right they are recognized so they can avail facilities like repo and msf we have seen that these are uh, two windows by which our commercial bank can avail the loan from reserve bank of india so since they are recognized they find their places in the second schedule of rbi act 1934 so they can avail this facility and and at the same time they have to abide by the 
guidelines of reserve bank of india they have to fulfill their crr and slr obligations right since they are recognized but another category of bank is called non scheduled commercial bank they are in fact not recognized by reserve bank of india hai na they are not recognized by reserve bank of india so they do not find their places in the second chapter or second schedule of rbi act 1934 hai na aap log ko samajh mein aa raha bachcho hai na they are not recognized by reserve bank of india so they do not find their places in the second schedule of rbi act 1934 so nowadays the maximum number of banks that we find in the economy are scheduled commercial bank they all have been recognized but there are a few banks in our country which is still beyond the purview of reserve bank of india they are non scheduled commercial bank for example there are some indigenous bank in our country you know which are not recognized at all indigenous bank like if you go to rajasthan jaipur you know those people are running a bank which is called marwadi kaya marwadi is a business community hai na marwadi jante hain aap log marwadi jo hai business community hota hai na ye community jo hai jaipur mein ek bank chala rahi hai marwadi kaya hai na to ye ek indigenous bank hai aur this bank do not find the place in second schedule of rbi act so it is not recognized non scheduled commercial bank then you go to south india in इन तमिलनाडु है ना देर इज ए चेतियार ग्रुप है ना हिस्ट्री में आप चेतियार के बारे में पढ़ेंगे चेतियार ग्रुप आर ऑल्सो रनिंग देयर बैंक राइट देन यू गो टू वेस्टर्न इंडिया इन गुजरात इवन इन गोवा एंड महाराष्ट्र देर इज ए कॉम्युनिटी श्रॉफ है ना श्रॉफ टाइगर श्रॉफ तो जानते होंगे आप लोग है ना उसी का कॉम्युनिटी है आपका श्रॉफ बैंक के नाम से उस बैंक को हम लोग इंडिया में जानते हैं है ना so this different uh, you know group of people are running their own banks and they are not recognized by reserve bank of india so they are called non scheduled commercial banks right so since they are not recognized they cannot avail the benefits in terms of crr and msf nor they need to fulfill the requirement in terms of uh, no they cannot avail the benefits in terms of repo and msf no do they fulfill the requirement of crr and slr they are simply beyond the supervision of reserve bank of india this is how classification of commercial bank is done by a reserve bank of india or central bank hai na so this is about the classification of commercial bank now we'll see the uh, you know functions and importance of commercial bank hai na these two concepts are widely different from each other these two concepts are widely different from each other the first one is called first one is called functions of commercial bank and second one is called role of commercial bank ye alag alag cheez hai aapko samajhna hoga difference है ना वट वी मीन बाई फंक्शन ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक एंड वट वी मीन बाई रोल ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक सो विल बेसिकली इम्फेसाइज ऑन रोल ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक फंक्शन इज समथिंग यू नो नॉट दैट इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ यू पी एस सी राइट एज बिंग द एस्पेरेंट ऑफ यू पी एस सी वी मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ वट फंक्शन कमर्शियल बैंक परफॉर्म राइट so basically when you go to bank you find banks either accept deposits or provide credit or transfer funds from one account to another account hai na these are three important functions of commercial bank hai na accepting deposits first providing credit in the economy providing credit in the economy and transferring funds from one branch to another or one account to another hai na ye bank ka jo hai functions hai role mein kya kya aayega bataiye जब हम बैंक की रोल की बात करते हैं तो इसमें क्या क्या आएगा क्या एक ही है दोनों क्या फंक्शंस ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक और रोल ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक एक ही है क्या डिफरेंस होता है किसी का फंक्शंस और रोल में लुक जब हम फंक्शंस की बात करते हैं ना दैट मींस व्हाट दैट इंस्टीट्यूशन इज डूइंग ऑन डे टू डे बेसिस है ना आपको वो बताना है है ना फंक्शंस में आपको यह बताना है कि व्हाट दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज डूइंग ऑन एवरी डे बेसिस सो आई टोल यू दैट व्हेन वी गो टू बैंक्स बैंक्स इधर एक्सेप्ट डिपॉजिट्स प्रोवाइड लोन्स और ट्रांसफर मनी है ना दीज आर द फंक्शंस 
बट रोल मीन्स इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक है ना रोल मीन्स इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक है ना इसका क्या इंपॉर्टेंस है उसको आपको लिखना होता है है ना तो यूपीएससी आपसे फैक्चुअल क्वेश्चंस नहीं पूछती कि व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट फंक्शंस ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक यू वांट टू आस समथिंग यस यस बोलिए ओके दैट दैट इज व्हाट बैंक्स डू और बैंक्स इंपॉर्टेंस इज इन दैट मैनर ना ओके रोल ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक सो विल डिस्कस रोल ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक है ना हम लोग एक एक करके पॉइंट वाइज हम लोग कमर्शियल बैंक का रोल रोल का मतलब इंपॉर्टेंस होगा जैसे हम टीचर्स का देखो हम टीचर्स का अगर फंक्शन पूछा हम लोग क्या करते हैं हम लोग का काम क्या आपको बोर करना हम लोग क्लास में आते हैं और पढ़ाते हैं पढ़ाना हमारा काम है है ना दिस इज आवर फंक्शन बट एक टीचर का रोल या इम्पोर्टेंस बहुत ज़्यादा है है या नहीं वो सोसाइटी को अवेयर करता है है ना बच्चों को ज्ञान देता है सोसाइटी को अवेयर करता है हमें अच्छी शिक्षा देता है है ना समाज को प्रोग्रेसिव रास्ते पे ले जाता है दिस इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ टीचर्स है ना सो इम्पॉर्टेंस इज जो है ना दैट इज अ काइंड ऑफ इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द फंक्शंस दैट ए पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनाइजन परफॉर्म ऑन डेली बेसिस सो हियर विल सी कि वट आर द डिफरेंट इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक विल डिस्कस दैम वन बाई वन द फर्स्ट Uh, you know, importance of commercial bank is that it induces people to save their money. है ना First point लिखिए It induces people to commercial bank induces people to save. है ना Commercial banks encourage people to save their money. है ना Without commercial banks in the economy, we are not going to set aside our earnings. We we will not be encouraged to save, right? So, how commercial bank induce people to save their money? How commercial bank encourage people to save their money by giving interest? The first, in fact, commercial bank provides three kinds of incentives by which we get encouragement to save our money. Is it? and what are what are those three elements that we are getting from the banks first we get interest on our saving hai right? na we get interest on our savings so banks provide interest on our savings so we get incentivized we want to put our with commercial bank we know that it's going to be compounded and right? it's going to be multiplied after some time once we start getting you know interest on continuous basis hai right? na this is the first kind of incentive what else second one is banks provide safety hai na safety to our money like if you keep them at your places where you put in right there is possibility that theft can be done hai na your money can be stolen there but if it is lying with banks possibility of theft is not there your money is safe hai na so safety is one of the element we want to put our money with commercial banks है ना सेफ्टी इज एन एन एलिमेंट प्रोवाइडेड बाय कमर्शियल बैंक एंड दैट इनकरेज पीपल टू यर मार्क यर मार्क देयर मनी विद कमर्शियल बैंक राइट व्हाट एल्स द थर्ड इंसेंटिव इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ लिक्विडिटी थर्ड इंसेंटिव इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ व्हाट लिक्विडिटी राइट आर मनी इज लिक्विड वी कैन विदड्रॉ दैम एज एंड वेन वी डिजायर है ना हम लोग पैसे तो जमा कर दिए बट दैट्स दैट मनी इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी ब्लॉक्ड है ना वो ब्लॉक नहीं हो गया है दैट इज लिक्विड एंड वी कैन विदड्रॉ दैम एज एंड वेन वी डिजायर राइट सो दिस आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ इंसेंटिव्स इंसेंटिव्स प्रोवाइडेड टू पीपल बाय कमर्शियल बैंक दैट इनकरेज दैम टू पुट देयर मनी विद कमर्शियल बैंक राइट सो कमर्शियल बैंक इंड्यूस पीपल टू सेव राइट इंड्यूस पीपल टू सेव फर्स्ट वन सो वाई वी इम्फेसाइज ऑन सेविंग सेविंग जरूरी क्यों है फ्यूचर के लिए आप बोल रहे हैं यानी यू जस्ट नीड टू हैव सम अमाउंट ऑफ मनी सो दैट यू कैन डील विथ योर एमरजेंट सिचुएशन यू वॉन्ट टू बी 
हैव मनी फॉर प्रिकॉशनरी मोटिव्स है ना प्रिकॉशनरी मोटिव्स के लिए आप ऐसा रखना चाहते हैं कि देर कुड बी सम अनफोर्सिन सिचुएशन इन आर लाइफ है ना सम एक्सीडेंट्स डेथ्स ऑफ सम इंडिविजुअल्स और अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इन दई मीन इन द फैमिली सो फॉर दैट काइंड ऑफ एमरजेंसी सिचुएशन यू मस्ट हैव सम अमाउंट ऑफ मनी है ना इसके लिए ये तो इंडिविजुअल के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से बोल रहे हैं इकोनॉमी के लिए सेविंग्स की जरूरत क्यों है अच्छा इंडिविजुअल के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से और आप बताइए ये तो प्रिकॉशनरी मोटिव आप बता रहे हैं कि बाय वे ऑफ प्रिकॉशंस वी मस्ट हैव सम अमाउंट ऑफ मनी बट वी नीड सेविंग्स इन ऑर्डर टू मेक फ्यूचर इन्वेस्टमेंट है ना हमें सेविंग्स इसलिए भी जरूरी है कि फ्यूचर में हम कुछ इन्वेस्टमेंट कर सके है ना आप दिल्ली में घर खरीदना चाहते हैं है ना उसके लिए आज से आपको थोड़ा थोड़ा पैसा जमा करना होगा है ना फॉर मेकिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट वी मस्ट हैव सम अमाउंट ऑफ मनी लाइंग विद द कमर्शियल बैंक इज एंड इट है ना सेम विद द कमर्शियल सेम विद द इकोनॉमी एज ए होल है ना एग्रीगेट लेवल पे भी आप देखेंगे सेविंग्स जो होता है ना हमारा इंटरनल रिसोर्सेज की तरह काम करता है है ना इट वर्क एज ए रिसोर्स फॉर द पीपल फॉर द इकॉनमी राइट सो इफ वी हैव पुट लॉर्ड्स ऑफ मनी विद कमर्शियल बैंक्स कमर्शियल बैंक अबिलिटी टू प्रोवाइड loan in the economy is going to be accentuated right and that helps more investment to come up right after all bank after all bank you know accepting the deposits from people provide them as credit right whom provide our producers the required sums of credit so that they can make investment in the economy banks to yahi karti hai na hum logo se jama ko swigar karti hai aur producers ko loan ke roop mein deti hai and what those people do they simply invest in the economy they open factory they open plant and that creates jobs in the economy employment increases our gdp start increasing so saving is essential so that we can spur of investment in the economy saving is essential so that we can engender avenues of jobs and increase our gdp right and and that is what commercial bank doing the economy they help people or they encourage people to save more money with the system aage samajh mein ye ek pehla importance hai aur bank ka kya importance hai na bank sirf logo ko paise jama karne ke liye encourage nahi kar rahi hai rather bank kya karti hai us fund ko mobilize karti hai hai na banks mobilize funds From surplus area to deficit area, है ना Banks mobilize funds from which area to which area? From surplus area to deficit area, है ना इसको लिखेंगे Banks mobilize funds from where? From surplus area to surplus areas to deficit areas. डेफिसिट एरियाज ठीक है बैंक मोबिलाइज फंड फ्रॉम सरप्लस एरियाज टू डेफिसिट एरियाज ठीक है सरप्लस एरिया का मतलब क्या है फ्रॉम दोज पीपल हु आर हैविंग सरप्लस मनी है ना सरप्लस एरिया मतलब फ्रॉम दोज पीपल हु आर हैविंग सरप्लस मनी लाइक वी हाउस होल्ड वी इंडिविजुअल्स है ना और एक्सपेंडिचर इज लोअर एज कंपेयर टू आर इनकम है ना हमारा इनकम ज्यादा एक्सपेंडिचर कम है हाउस होल्ड्स का है ना एक्सपेंडिचर कम है इनकम ज्यादा है सो वी आर इन सरप्लस वी कैन पुट आवर मनी विद बैंक है ना सो फ्रॉम सच पीपल बैंक सॉलिसिट डिपॉजिट है ना बैंक सॉलिसिट डिपॉजिट फ्रॉम सच पीपल एंड देन यू नो डाइवर्ट दैम टूवर्ड्स वेयर टूवर्ड्स डेफिसिट एरियाज विच एरियाज आर डेफिसिट द एरियाज or the people that require funds so basically these are required in large quantities by our producers our investors right they always hanker after money as they have you know projects which is going to guzzle lots of money hai na they have the projects that are going to guzzle lots of money so they need money for their projects and they are in deficit they are not having that that much of you know money so they are reliant on where on commercial banks so they get loan from commercial bank then only they make investment so when bank mobilize the funds from surplus area to deficit area that make investment employment and gdp possible hai na usse fir investment hota hai 
फिर इन्वेस्टमेंट होने का मतलब है एवेन्यूज ऑफ इंप्लॉयमेंट इंक्रीजेज एंड दैट ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेज द लेवल ऑफ जी है ना वी स्टार्ट growing ourselves in the economy and that is what bank precisely does in the economy it mobilizes funds from surplus area to deficit area so that we can spur up investment create more jobs and increase our gdp aa samajh mein aap logo ko ha pani pee sakte hain aap log break loge kya to break lijiye aap log 5 minute ka hai na 5 10 minute ka break lijiye so we are discussing uh, importance of commercial bank for the economy first point of importance is that that encourage banks banks encourage people to save their money right and uh, banks also mobilize funds from surplus area to deficit area so that we have more investment gdp and employment in the economy right what else aur kya hai iska importance थर्ड पॉइंट लिखिए बैंक्स हेल्प इन हेल्प इन इंक्रीजिंग ग्रोथ थ्रू सप्लाई ऑफ मनी थ्रू सप्लाई ऑफ मनी supply of money so banks in the economy helps in accelerating the process of economic growth without banks the process of growth in the economy is affected and that becomes subdued but once we have a large network of commercial bank that's going to support the process of growth you'll find that more and more output is being produced because because you know banks basically increases money supply in the economy and once money supply is increased then growth will be accelerated in the economy this is a very important component in our economy supply of money hum na iske bare hum discuss kar chuke hain supply of money refers to total quantity of money lying with the people at a point of time hai na supply of money means total quantity of money that we are having at a point of time ठीक है जैसे अगर मैं कहूँ आज आज के डेट में इंडिया में मनी का सप्लाई जो है 27 लाख करोड़ का है 27 लाख करोड़ रुपीस दैट मींस दिस इज द टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ मनी वी पीपल ऑफ इंडिया आर हैविंग विद अस राइट दिस इज व्हाट वी मीन बाय सप्लाई ऑफ मनी राइट एंड सफिशिएंट मनी सप्लाई इज नीडेड टू स्पर ग्रोथ इन द इकोनमी इफ सप्लाई ऑफ मनी इज नॉट सफिशियंट people are not having adequate quantity of money with them then supply of money when it is not sufficient that means it's going to impact aggregate demand demand in the economy will come down isn't it right and when demand in the economy comes down so will price price moves in the same direction as demand right lower the demand lower the price and now these two factors will discourage our producers to take the plunge hai na when they find that demand is weaker in the economy and prices are plummeting southward then obviously in this stringent situation they would not like to produce goods and services right hai na wo dekhega yaar demand to kam hai log goods and services ki demand nahi kar rahe and prices bhi jo hai plummet ho raha matlab uski profit kya ho rahi hai kam ho rahi hai ye unke liye pessimistic situation hai and in that pessimistic situation producers will not like to produce more hai na so they will not hire the labor force on the contrary वर्कर्स विल बी रिट्रेंच्ड दे विल बी लेड ऑफ है ना नया वर्कर्स को एम्प्लॉयमेंट नहीं मिलेगा जो भी काम कर रहा उसको भी क्या कर दिया जाएगा काम से बाहर कर दिया जाएगा एज देर हैज बीन नो स्ट्रॉन्ग डिमांड इन द इकोनॉमी सो रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ वर्कर्स विल गेट रिड्यूस एंड सम ऑफ दैम विल बी यू नो लेड ऑफ राइट एंड दैट्स गोइंग टू इंक्रीज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इन द इकॉनमी राइट दैट्स गोइंग टू इंक्रीज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट and our gdp or production will start plummeting right so we have slow down in the economy when we have recession or slow down there are these two important development that take place hai na there is massive unemployment along with plummeting gdp this is what we mean by <coughs> economic recession or slow down so you can see how important this component of money supplies 
if they are not in sufficient quantity that's going to put the economy to the brink of slowdown right or the brink of unemployment but once this becomes sufficient now let's suppose supply opening becomes sufficient then it will you know make demand stronger than before and now price will start increasing right and these two factors will now incentivize our producers they will find that demand is increasing in the economy prices are also increasing now producers will take the plunge they would like to produce more goods and services then labor force will be hired and that's going to reduce the problem of unemployment and we can we can just accelerate the process of augmentation of gdp right and that way we can mitigate the impact of slowdown right and this is what our banks are doing in the economy they always increase money supply so that growth and employment in the economy can occur hai na kaise hota hai money supply how banks increase the money supply humne aapko kya padhaya tha commercial banks cannot print money hai na who prints money <laughs> we, we have only two institutions in our economy that are responsible for creation of money one <coughs> one is the reserve bank of india sorry one is reserve bank of india and second one is government of india right so they are the creator of money they are the supplier or producers of money unlike these two institutions commercial banks do not print money hai na so why or how commercial bank can augment the supply of money when it is not printing any money yes very good providing credit in the economy hai na we know that do commercial bank do not print money but it provides credit in the economy every time credit is provided in the economy that leads to increase in money supply right now people will have more of money with them and that's going to you know increase our aggregate demand hai na let's suppose we all are getting the you know credit from commercial bank hai na we are getting good amount of good chunk of money from the commercial bank by way of, by way of credit so what we will do we'll start buying something like we'll buy refrigerator we will buy air conditioning or we can ca buy car hai na so that's going to increase aggregate demand hai na demand increases and when demand increases then obviously the producers will get encouragement they will make investment they will hire the labor force and that way the process of growth will be accelerated right so commercial bank supports growth in the economy by augmenting supply of money is that clear है ना तो जिस इकोनॉमी में ज्यादा बैंक है उनके पास ज्यादा पैसे है वहां पे आप देखेंगे ग्रोथ का मोमेंटम जो है वो ज्यादा तेज होता है और जिस इकोनॉमी में बैंक्स के नंबर्स कम होते हैं उनके पास पैसे कम होते हैं लाइक अफ्रीकन इकोनॉमी है ना यू डोंट हैव दैट लार्ज नेटवर्क ऑफ कमर्शियल बैंक इन अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज राइट एंड दे आर लैकिंग विथ फंड ऑल्सो सो द प्रोसेस इज यू नो हेम्पर्ड the process of investment and growth is hampered in that particular economy hai na but america uk especially uk hai na big network of banks is found there so look at the growth they are having right now they are saturated economy hai na so this is the important role of commercial bank in the economy and the last one that i am going to discuss is that commercial banks make monetary policy effective fourth one is commercial banks make monetary policy more effective more effective so we are done with the chapters of monetary policy everything we know what is monetary policy types of monetary policy then we discuss with you uh, various objectives of monetary policy and even the new framework of monetary policy that we have adopted has been discussed up in the class already right hai na so we know that monetary policy in, is is in the domain of the central bank of this country the central bank of the country formulate and implement monetary policy this policy is concerned with supply of money volume of credit and rate of interest right hai na so though this policy is implemented by reserve bank of india it is commercial bank that make monetary policy more effective without commercial banks in the economy 
you cannot think of monetary policy getting effective right so when you will say that monetary policy is effective and when you say that monetary policy is less effective batao jo class le chuke hain wo batayenge ki aap monetary policy ko effective kab man kab manenge hmm हाँ वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ठीक है ठीक है समझ गया है ना हम मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी को इफेक्टिव तब मानेंगे जब मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी अपने ऑब्जेक्टिव्स को अचीव कर लेगा है ना जिस ऑब्जेक्टिव्स को अचीव करने के लिए हमने मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी को फॉर्मुलेट किया है अगर हम उसे अचीव कर ले कर पा रहे हैं तो हम इसे इफेक्टिव मानेंगे है ना सो द न्यू फ्रेमवर्क ऑफ मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी दैट वी हैव टूडे and its main objective is to ensure the stability of price you know we have seen that stability of price that means uh, there should be no wide fluctuations in price neither the situation of inflation nor the situation of deflation should occur in the economy you know yahi to hai na stability of price ka matlab and when reserve bank of india achieve this objectives and price remains in that particular range between 2% to 6% that is the mandate given to reserve bank of india that you have to contain inflation between 2% and 6% if rbi has been able to do so through its monetary policy will consider monetary policy to be effective hai na but if rbi is not able to achieve this objective let's suppose inflation is either below 2% or more than 6% right then monetary policy becomes ineffective right ineffective so these are commercial banks that are going to make monetary policy more effective like we can have two different economies a and b let's suppose in economy of a there is no banks at all hai na here we find no banks or number banks number of banks are very few let's suppose <coughs> number of banks are very few here in economy a so if there is inflation in this economy if there is inflation in the economy then central bank of the country in order to combat with inflation needs to increase the repo rate hai na humne discuss kiya already hai na ki inflation ke time mein contractionary monetary policy ko implement kiya jata hai interest rate has to be increased by the central bank this is precisely what our central bank is trying to do hai na it's increasing the repo rate so that market rate of interest increases and when market rate of interest increases then only people will take less credit money supply will come down aggregate demand reduces and that helps central bank to control inflation this mechanism should be working here but in fact the economy where there is no banks or number of banks are very few this mechanism will not work right so the central bank of the country will fail to control inflation why because here if there are no banks that means people are fulfilling the requirement of their loans through whom through private money lenders right they are not taking the loans from banks banks are not there or there are only a few banks in the economy so our credit requirement is being fulfilled through private money money lenders and we should know that private money lenders do not work under the supervision of reserve bank of india right so when reserve bank of india will increase repo rate they will not respond to this situation hai na as they are not within the ambit of rbi right so they will not respond to this situation they will not increase the rate of interest right rate of interest let's suppose remain constant so if rate of interest is not increased that will not bring down the volume of credit and money supply aggregate demand will remain intact and there is no let down in price hai na price remain constant so there is no controlling of inflation you got this point aa gaya samajh mein aapko है ना तो यहां पे बैंक नहीं है तो आप अपने ऑब्जेक्टिव्स को अचीव नहीं कर पा रहे योर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू कंट्रोल इन्फ्लेशन बट यू फेल टू डू सो राइट बट नाउ वी एज्यूम अनदर इकोनॉमी हैविंग लॉट्स ऑफ बैंक गुड नेटवर्क ऑफ बैंक है ना एंड इफ दिस इकोनॉमी कन्फ्रेंस विथ इन्फ्लेशन इफ दिस कन्फ्रेंस विथ इन्फ्लेशन इफ दिस कन्फ्रेंस विथ इन्फ्लेशन देन द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया विल इंक्रीज रेपो रेट एंड ऑल द बैंक विल रिस्पॉन्ड टू दिस सिचुएशन है ना वेन रेपो रेट इंक्रीजेज इट बिकम्स कॉस्टलियर फॉर कमर्शियल बैंक टू टेक द लोन फ्रॉम आर बी आई 
सो कमर्शियल बैंक विल ऑल्सो इंक्रीज द रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एट विच दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग लोन्स टू कॉमन पीपल है ना मार्केट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इंक्रीजेज एंड देन वॉल्यूम ऑफ क्रेडिट सप्लाई ऑफ मनी कम्स डाउन दिस विल रिड्यूस एग्रीगेट डिमांड फाइनली प्राइस विल ऑल्सो be reduced and that way we can control inflation hai na so what you find you find that you know the cooperation of commercial bank is needed the cooperation of commercial bank is needed it's not only by increasing the repo rate that way we can uh, expect that inflation will come down until and unless commercial bank respond to this you know gesture of reserve bank of india there is going to be no effectiveness of monetary policy it's only when commercial bank also you know just uh, respond to the change in policy rate by reserve bank of india then reserve bank of india would be able to achieve the objectives right so commercial banks in the economy always supposed to make monetary policy effective as they are supposed to respond to the respond to the <coughs> change in policy rates by reserve bank of india is that clear aage samajh mein aap logo ko तो अब थोड़ा सा आप लोग का क्लास का जो स्ट्रक्चर में थोड़ा सा चेंज हुआ है ना अब क्या है हम लोग ऐसे करने वाले हैं कि क्लासेस आपके होंगे जैसे अब 15 से 20 मिनट क्लास का रह गया है तो अब तक जो टॉपिक मैं पढ़ाया आज कुछ चीज़ नहीं समझ में आया तो आपको पूछना है है ना विल टेक क्लास फॉर टू आवर्स ऑनली है ना एंड देन फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी मिनट्स जो है आपको दिए जाएंगे यू कैन आस्क द डाउट्स फ्रॉम द टॉपिक्स दैट हैव बीन कम्प्लीटेड दैट पर्टिकुलर डे है ना देन एवरी फिफ्टीन ऑफ डे भी जो है आपका एक डाउट क्लियर करने का एक यहाँ पे क्लास रखा जाएगा है ना उस फिफ्टीन ऑफ डे में क्या करना है कि ऑल द चैप्टर्स दैट हैव बीन कम्प्लीटेड इन द लास्ट फिफ्टीन डेज ऑफ टाइम है ना इफ़ यू हैव सम डाउट्स यू कैन रेज द क्वेश्चन इन दैट पर्टिकुलर क्लास है ना तो टुडे वी डिस्कस फिलिप्स कब एंड स्टैक फ्लेसन एंड देन द कमर्शियल बैंक है ना तो इसमें अगर आपको कुछ डाउट है कुछ पूछना है तो आप पूछ सकते हैं यस <coughs> yes. तो आप लोग यूपीएससी की तैयारी स्टार्ट किए हो या करने वाले हो क्या है आप कर चुके हो अच्छा एंड वे आर यू आर गेटिंग द गाइडेंस फ्रॉम ओके एन आप अच्छा आप लोग तीनों एक ही जगह से हो एक ही साथ ये रहते हो है ना ठीक है तो एन आपने स्टार्ट किया है और कोई आपका मेंटर है कहीं से आपको गाइडेंस मिल रहा है कोई आपके सीनियर्स जिन्होंने इस एग्ज़ाम को क्लियर किया है कोई ऐसा किसी को जानते हो आप लोग नहीं बिल्कुल आप लोग ठीक है <laughs> देखिए बेसिकली मैं आपको बता रहा हूं कि जो ये यूपीएससी का एग्जाम जो है ना आप किसी कोचिंग के सहारे जो है क्लियर नहीं कर पाओगे आपको सेल्फ स्टडी करना ही होगा है ना कोचिंग से आपको कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर होगा फंडामेंटल्स आपके क्लियर हो जाएंगे क्योंकि आप सभी सब्जेक्ट्स में इक्वली इक्वली जो है नॉलेजेबल नहीं हो सकते हैं है ना लाइक यू मे बी फ्रॉम आर्ट्स बैकग्राउंड यू मे बी फ्रॉम साइंस बैकग्राउंड सो सम सब्जेक्ट्स कुड बी इजियर एंड डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू राइट है ना सो व्हेन यू कम टू द कोचिंग क्लासेस ना विद इन फ्यू मंथ्स ऑफ टाइम योर फंडामेंटल्स बिकम्स क्लियर है ना इन दैट वे कोचिंग इज हेल्पफुल है ना यू डोंट हैव टू रीड ऑल द बुक्स बाई योर सेल्फ है ना सम ऑफ द टास्क मस्ट बी लेफ्ट ऑन योर टीचर्स like if you are not from economics background why to bother uh, by going through the technical books of economics rather leave it to the teachers hai na teachers will make the concept clear hai na fir unke notes padhiye <laughs> unke notes padhiye wo jo aapko direction de rahe ho uske according aap tayari kijiye ye aapko karna hai lekin aap ye mat samajhiye ki just by coming to the classroom having the classes here hai na you can clear this examinations that will not happen ever in your life hai na even though you come to the class continuously for 2 years of time i am saying that you cannot be able to clear this even prelim exams hai na so self study is must hai na you have to put lots of efforts yourself then only you can clear this examination theek hai 
हम लोग क्लास में नाउ दिस इज आई स्टार्ट टीचिंग एट ए वेरी यंग एज है ना सो नाउ दिस इज गोइंग टू बी एट्थ ईयर है ना मैं पढ़ा रहा हूँ आई स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व और थर्टीन है ना पढ़ाना स्टार्ट किया था मैंने यहाँ करोल बाग में सो ओनली दो स्टूडेंट्स कुड क्वालिफाई फ्रॉम माई क्लास दैट वर पुटिंग लॉर्ड्स ऑफ ड्रजरी है ना आई टोल यू इन द लास्ट क्लास है ना द सिक्सटीन रैंक शिखा सुरेंद्रन है ना देन राजीव चौधरी अगेन है ना दोनों को कैरल का कार्डर मिला देन लक्ष सिंघल है ना आपका गौरव जो कि अभी यहीं पे है आपका दिल्ली में है है ना सो ऑल दिस पीपल वर द स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम माई वेरी फर्स्ट बैच राइट एंड इन दैट बैच इन संकल्प वेयर आई वॉज टीचिंग देर वर अराउंड हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी स्टूडेंट्स इन दैट क्लास रूम बट ओनली फोर ऑफ दैम कुड क्लियर दिस एग्जाम so if our teachings would have been that effective then why not all the students could clear so it's not about the teaching of your teachers and you know? it's not about you know the material that we provide it's about your hard work and you know? so only those you know aspirants succeed in this exam that work on the guidance given to them by the coachings by the mentors by the teachers right so we give you brief idea how to go about the preparation of your upsc right but after all you have to work on them by yourself right so make sure that you revise every day the things provided to you in the class right hai na taki fir kya hoga aapke you just don't let the work to get piled up hai na if it start getting piled up na then you have burden right you have burden then you won't like the process of preparation theek hai so make sure that you revise the things every day and that will that will help you complete your syllabus in a time bound manner yahan pe sabse zyada important jo hai management of time hai jab aap log doge exams to aapko pata chalega hai na maine apne life mein teen mains diye do interview maine diya hai na finally i could not i could not succeed hai na maine do interview face kiya teen maine mains diye hain theek hai char attempts mein teen mains aur do interview maine diya hai na nahi ho paya इनका ही बिलोंग्स टू बोकारो और इनका साथ जो मेरा फ्रेंड है आदित्य रंजन है ना हम लोग रूममेट्स हुआ करते थे आदित्य रंजन है ना ही बिकेम द आई ऑफिसर राइट नाउ ही इज इन झारखंड है ना उनको होम कैडर मिल गया ना तो वी वर सेवन फ्रेंड्स है ना मेकिंग प्रेपरेशन आदित्य रंजन वॉज वन ऑफ दैम दीपा गोयल जो कि अभी पंजाब में है सी इज द एस है ना एस ऑफ सम डिस्ट्रिक्ट है ना सो वी वर फ्रेंड्स तो किसी का हुआ किसी का नहीं हो पाया है ना हम लोगों ने सब ने मेहनत किया ठीक है तो आपको वो चीज़ करना पड़ेगा एंड इफ लक इज़ इन योर फेवर ना देन यू विल बिकम द आई एस और आई पी एस ऑफिसर सो मे बी लक वॉज नॉट इन माई फेवर राइट लक वॉज नॉट इन माई फेवर सो आई कुड नॉट सी थ्रू दिस एग्जामिनेशन बट इट कैन हैपन विथ यू दैट लक इज इन योर फेवर बट लक विल सपोर्ट यू ओनली वैन यू स्टार्ट पुटिंग डजरे है ना यू स्टार्ट पुटिंग लॉर्ड्स ऑफ हार्ड वर्क विदाउट हार्ड वर्क डोंट डोंट थिंक दैट ओनली लक विल see you through this examination that will not happen ever in your life hai na to self study jo hai zaruri hai isliye main aap log ko bolta hu ki bar bar aap log cheezo ko revise karna start kare theek hai economics ke liye notes aap log baat kijiye management se hai na they will start uploading the notes hai na aap unse baat kijiye aur printed notes hai na apart from the class notes mai bhi ye log aapko printed notes bhi provide karenge in fact wo mera hi notes hai to आप उसको पढ़ सकते हैं ठीक है कुछ डाउट्स है कुछ पूछना है तो पूछ सकते हैं आप लोग 